right, we got some brand new updates from Dragon Quest Monsters 3 The Dark Prince coming out December 1st of this year. We've got some information on some of the new monsters, the way that the synthesis is going to work, as well as the uh, skill trees and stuff like that. So some of this is new, most of it is not. Like a lot of this was used in the Dragon Quest Monsters Joker games. It was also used in the Dragon Quest Monster remakes on the 3DS that were only released in Japan. They were not released here, unfortunately. Uh, but let's go through it. So we got Dragon Quest Monsters The Dark Prince is a grand adventure, but also a dangerous one. The protagonist, Sorrow, has been cursed and is unable to directly harm anything with monster blood as a result. So we kind of know that from previous trailers and a couple of my previous videos that I've done on the game. Fortunately, there's a solution. Become a monster wrangler. Sorrow is able to recruit a vast selection of different monsters and use their talents and skills to overcome foes, beat rivals, and rise to the top in his quest to become the master of monster kind. But how does combat work? In this preview, we'll take a look at the basics of combat, some of the ways to recruit new monsters, synthesis, and more. Alright, so we've got um, the Bambooligan, which I think this is the first time this monster will be seen in the West. This is a monster from Dragon Quest X. I really love this guy. He's a little Japanese samurai spearman guy made completely out of bamboo. He's kind of got like a kendo mask on and then a bamboo spear, of course. Cute little bastard. And then you can kind of see your party member is going to have four small monsters. And it just depends on the size of the monster, how big your party will be. And then you have four in your back party as well. And the size of your monster. So there, there'll be, I think, usually three different sizes. There's medium, large, and small. Small is like your regular monsters, like your slimes and stuff like that. Large would be like Leviathan from uh, Dragon Quest IX or something like that. Some big bastard. He's going to take up two, three, or maybe even all four uh, slots in your party. So it's a way of creating balance. They have the uh, massive monsters are obviously a lot stronger. Some of them can attack two or three times every turn those guys are going to take up more party space to make it a little bit more balanced. Alright, let's get into the basics of combat. As a Monster Wrangler, you'll build a team of monsters to battle against your enemies as you progress through the adventure. Your active team can have up to eight members at a time, up to four in your main party and four in your reserve. So kind of what I was talking about there. You have like a front party that does all the battles and then you have a back party. If it's anything like Dragon Quest Monsters 1 and 2 remakes on the 3DS, you will gain EXP in the back party, but I think it wasn't as much I think it was just slightly less than the front party but the nice thing is is you can use your back party if you have if you have some weaker guys that you need to grind up you can give them a little bit of exp while in the back party and then when they're strong enough to kind of stand on their own you can throw them in the front party and then after each battle or in between battles you can use your uh, spells from your back party to heal the guys the weaker guys in your front party it's it's just a little bit easier to level up uh, your your newer monsters it shows kind of the tactic screen here as well so you can uh, go show no mercy we can the enemies support your allies focus on healing just like all the other Dragon Quest games pretty much since Dragon Quest 4 you got the sexy picture of the green dragon here he's like my favorite Dragon Quest monster of all time during battle, you can issue precise orders to each individual monster or set general tactics, such as show no mercy, focus on healing. Leave your monsters themselves to decide the specifics. So most of the Dragon Quest Monsters games, at least the old ones, I haven't played much of the Joker ones, so I could be out of the loop there, but most of the old ones, the monsters just kind of did their own thing based on your tactics that you had set for them. But the newer ones, the uh, Dragon Quest Monsters 1 and 2 remakes, you were able to directly control them all if you wanted. It's a bit tedious to try and control all four monsters in the front party, especially when the amount of abilities, like attacks and, and spells that they have can be super long. Like you can have like a super long list. I was talking during one of my streams about how this game is going to show a lot of Pokemon fans who have been looking for something better how good a monster taming franchise can be because they were saying man we don't even have more than four attacks per monster well Dragon Quest monsters uh, at least the the Dragon Quest monsters one and two remakes you have like a whole list man you can have probably like 30 different abilities if you want on each monster so in a way it's awesome because you have all these different options to use in battle in a way it does become a bit much when there's too many so I usually stick to tactics so that the monsters can just kind of pick what they want to do based on their abilities 
but every once in a while, especially for boss fights, you'll probably want to take direct control. Despite your best efforts, sometimes the enemy will get on the back foot and make victory seem like a distant dream. I think it means get you on the back foot. Should this happen, your monsters may enter a frenzied state out of sheer desperation. Not only will they inflict greater damage, they'll gain additional opportunities to act, letting you to turn a certain defeat into a famous triumph. So this, I believe, is new. It seems like tension. So if you're getting your ass beat and things are in dire straits, you can uh, actually enter a frenzied state and get a couple bonus turns, it looks like, to uh, try and pull yourself out of a tough situation. That's a really cool idea, I think, because some of the boss fights in these Dragon Quest monster games can be pretty tough. Getting new monsters. There are many ways to grow your roster of monsters. For example, you could leave it to luck and wait for an enemy monster to ask to join you after battle, but there are far more efficient methods than that. Let's say you run into a strong looking enemy that you fancy having on your team. You could hit it with a show of force and try to persuade it to join you. With clever use of your items such as meat based goodies and other treats, you can increase the likelihood of a monster wanting to join you, as well as improve the persuasiveness of your show of force. So, show of force is no different than if you've played Dragon Quest Monsters Joker, like the first one. Uh, the only one I've played. There was like that scout option, I think it was actually called show of force, and you basically use your monster team to beat up the monster you want to recruit, and then it'll show a percentage bar, and the more damage you do, the higher percentage that monster will join you. So the stronger your monster is, the likelier you will be able to recruit another monster. You also can use meat like beef jerky, sirloin, stuff like that, to automatically like increase that percentage before you even use show of force, so that's also a nice way to recruit new monsters. Put your items to good use to recruit the monsters you want, you may also meet other wranglers on your journey who are willing to combine their monsters with yours to create a brand new creature. One they'll even let you keep. So that is something I've never seen before in the series. That sounds pretty badass. I don't know if that is talking about player to player. Like if you and your friend have a monster and you want to synthesize them, I wonder if you like both get the the like offspring of that uh, synthesis. Or if there's NPCs in the game that'll have a monster and they want to combine with you and then you get a new monster because of it. I'm not too sure, but either way, that's kind of cool. I don't think any of the Dragon Quest monster games have had that yet. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Also, guys, if you are watching this and you enjoy these videos, please remember to like and subscribe. Helps more people get access to this video. Let's it show up in their feed so they can check this news update out as well. It also helps me get even closer to reaching a thousand subscribers. I'm super close to that. I have a very special Dragon Quest related video in the works for my thousand subscriber special. So please subscribe, turn notifications to all. I do top 10 videos as well if you're interested in that. Now let's keep going. Synthesis. Those methods are all well and good, but a true monster wrangler's favorite way to improve their team is through synthesis, which lets you combine two monsters to create a new one. The synthesis system has been overhauled for Dragon Quest Monsters The Dark Prince and now features combinations that will make sense even to series newcomers. It's the most intuitive system that the series has ever seen. For example, combine the toothy great saber cat with the bird like Garuda and you'll get a powerful missing Lynx. So, I don't know what it's talking about here. I know the Dragon Quest 1 and 2 remakes, it would kind of show all your possible outcomes. I think Joker 1 did that as well though, so I'm not too sure what they're talking about here making it make more sense. I think it always kind of did make sense to me, but anyways. Monster Talents. Each monster comes with at least one talent. This is a set of spells and abilities that you gradually unlock by assigning the talent points a monster earns through leveling up or other means. There are broad categories of talent, and each one contains a mix of skills, magic spells, attribute boosters, and more. When a child monster is synthesized, it comes with its own innate talent, but can also inherit talents from its parents. Understanding this is key to creating powerful monsters. There are numerous talents to be acquired in the game, some provide life-saving healing spells, while others can turn a monster into a powerhouse or a damage sponge. A selection of talents are even named after some very familiar monsters. The talents are basically just skill trees, I don't know why they changed it to talent, like talent points were called skill points before. Either way, it seems very similar to the uh, Dragon Quest Monsters 1 and 2. Two remakes like I kind of keep bringing up here. I can't remember if Dragon Quest Monsters Joker uh, had skill trees. I'm pretty sure it did though. 
So basically, yeah, every monster has like innate skill trees or what they're calling talents now. And you will have those talents. And then when you synthesize your monsters, usually you get to pick, I think, two from each parent to carry forward. And then you get to choose if you want to use one of the init skill trees from the new monster that you're creating. You can only have a max of a certain amount of skill trees or now now known as talents. It's a nice way to uh, fully customize your monsters because you can end up with, say, like a green dragon at the end, but you started him off as like a heal slime, and so he's gonna have, you can keep carrying forward his healing magic uh, talent and stuff. So it's a really nice way to fully customize your monsters. You can gain abilities that this monster normally would never have, but because all of the monsters that you synthesized to get to this point had all these different abilities, you can carry those abilities forward into that monster so that they gain all these bonus abilities. And you can build kind of your favorite green dragon, your green dragon who can do everything you've always wanted a green dragon to be able to do. These are some examples of the talents. So talent focus cure all uh, with potent healing spells such as multi heal and omni heal as well as zing to revive your allies and kabuff to boost their defense. The cure-all talent is a must-have for your party's healer. There's also the talent focus, the Dragon Lord. Devastating fiery breath attacks, such as Inferno and Halitosis. And the uh, debilitating burning breath and wave of panic. Combined with the spells More Heal and Kassizzle to make the Dragon Lord a fearsome talent that is worthy of the name. As it should be, Dragon Lord is a badass. Family Traits. Each monster type has its own unique set of traits. Latent abilities that can boost attributes or disrupt your enemy's plans. New ones are unlocked automatically when your monsters reach a certain level so I think this is different so you can see here the dragon lord has intimidate I don't know if these are specific to each monster or each family but it sounds like they're gonna have like a trait that will affect your opponents or your party members based on based on your monster and what monsters you choose for your party. A monster's size affects the number of traits as at its disposal, with large monsters able to acquire more. Speaking of monster sizes, so this is what I was talking about a bit earlier. Sizes and ranks. Monsters come in two different sizes in Dragon Quest Monsters the Dark Prince, small or large. Small monsters take up one slot in your team roster, while large monsters require two slots. This means you could, for example, have a party of four small monsters, two large ones, or two small and one large. Not only do large monsters have higher attributes than their smaller counterparts, they can also act multiple times per round during battle. As well as the size, monsters are assigned one of nine ranks. G, F, E, D, C, B, A, S, or X, from lowest to highest. The rank is attached to the monster's type and can't be changed. Among the S rank monsters, you'll find many familiar antagonists from the series, but the most fiendishly powerful monsters exclusively occupy rank X. So this is a little different than what they've been doing. This is, uh, so there's only two sizes now, large and small. There used to be small, medium, and large, I believe, with medium taking up two spaces, large taking up three, and I, I wanna say you could even get a four space guy that's just massive, but I could be wrong. The monster ranking is nothing new, but I think this information is for people that have never played another Dragon Quest Monsters game, which is good to get that info out there. X rank, I don't remember existing. I remember there being S rank, so X is probably just exclusively designed for like boss, mo super powerful boss monsters. Uh, testing your metal in the battle arenas of two worlds. As Sorrow's Adventure takes shape, two battle arenas where you can test your monsters might become available. The Endor Coliseum in the human world of Terrestria and the Mausoleum in the monster realm of Nadiria. In these arenas, every opponent is an expert monster wrangler in their own right. Can you overcome them all and raise an army capable of topping the master of monster kind himself? So this is really cool actually. Most Dragon Quest Monsters games will have an arena, but there's usually only one, and this one lets you go to Endor. Dude, anyone who's played Dragon Quest 4 or loves Dragon Quest 4 understands my absolute love for them having the Endor Coliseum in the game. The exact place, since this is a prequel, where Elena will eventually go to to uh, win the world tournament and uh, live out her dreams. Sorrow will also compete there in the future as well. The mausoleum in the monster realm of Nadiria. I mean, that makes sense. I think most of this game is gonna be taking place in Nadiria, but does this mean we're going to be able to explore the world from Dragon Quest IV, now known as Terrestria? Because if you can go to the Endor Coliseum, that could mean that we are not just stuck in the underworld of Nadiria. It could mean that we are actually going to be exploring a prequel 
version of the world from Dragon Quest 4, which would be incredibly badass. Dragon Quest 4 is my second favorite game of all time, so I'm, I'm hoping we get more news on that. If not, I am completely fine with finding out by playing the game, but I could also see it as just going to a coliseum and selecting which one you wanted to compete in, and it being like that. I don't want to get my hopes up too much, that could be just the case, but uh, let me tell you, it would be absolutely incredible if we could go to the world of Dragon Quest 4. And this kind of ties into my video I did a little while back talking about why right now is the best time for them to release the Zenithian Trilogy on modern consoles like the Switch. This is going to be one hell of a throwback to Dragon Quest 4, one of the greatest games of all time, and there is no accessible way other than your cell phone to play Dragon Quest 4. So check out my video on that as well if you'd like. Meet some of the monsters. Finally, let's take a look at some of the monsters you'll encounter in Dragon Quest Monsters of the Dark Prince. The game features more than 500 monsters to befriend, including Jasper Unbound and Crystalinda from Dragon Quest XI, Echoes of an Elusive Age. Naturally, there'll also be a selection of brand new monsters you've never seen before. And then it goes on to talk about Jasper Unbound, the former general of a famous kingdom who succumbed to his own dark ambitions and transformed into a monster, and he looks great in this game. Crystalinda, who <laughs> looks great anytime, let me tell you. An ice witch who was magically sealed inside a forbidden book in ancient times. Now we got Greater Platypunk, who is, uh, I'm pretty sure this guy was in, um, Caravan Hearts, but I could be wrong. Not that anyone besides my friend Fates has played and enjoyed that game. Greater Platypunk, a fluffy monster from the Beast family that is widely considered a king among Platypunks. So you Platypunk lovers, you got yourself a king now, baby. Gander, a monster from the Demon family that appears before dying creatures to witness their final moments. I don't know why they're advertising Gander. He's basically just a recolored Blinky. I don't know why they're, like, putting him front and center here. Dragon Quest Monster of the Dark Prince launches for Nintendo Switch on December 1st, 2023. In addition to the Standard Edition, a Digital Deluxe Edition is also available. And here's some information on the Digital Deluxe Edition. So, a lot of the stuff that I talked about in my last video is part of this pre-order bonus, so I did have some exclusive news in that one. If you want to go over more of the details in that, be sure to check out my previous Dragon Quest Monster of the Dark Prince news video, and you can kind of find out what all this crazy Digital Deluxe Edition pre-order bonus stuff is. It includes includes the full game download, the mole hole, which includes the gothic vestment outfit, Coach Joe's dungeon gym includes the cake maker's cobbler outfit, treasure trunks includes the monster mail outfit, burgundy gothic vestment, warrior's ring one, ten beastie bites, players who pre-order or pre-purchase the game will also receive the head start set which includes stardust earrings, scholar specs, and bonus balls. Bonus balls just double your exp when you use them. Scholar specs probably just up your MP. I don't, do not know what Stardust Earrings uh, will do, so if you kind of know what Stardust Earrings do, let us know in the comments. I'm sure I've experienced them before in a Dragon Quest game, I just can't remember right now. The game is available to pre-order right now. Looks like you can pre-order it on their website, which is pretty cool. So I think what I'm going to do for this game, I'm probably going to pre-order a physical edition, and then I'm probably going to download the digital deluxe edition, just because December is a terrible month to try and pre-order and get a game in the mail, because the mail is going to be jam-packed with Christmas presents. So I'm going to do it that way. I don't know when I'll get my physical copy, but at least I'll know I'll be able to play the digital deluxe edition when the game comes out December 1st. I'm incredibly excited for this. If you guys enjoyed these videos, again, please remember to like, subscribe, and turn notifications to all so I can get that uh, thousand subscriber special video out there. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. I hope you guys enjoy it, and I appreciate each and every one of you. I will see you guys in the next one.